I was born in Parnell Street in Clonmel, in County Tipperary. Uh, my mother was Philomena Redmond. My dad was Sean Dunphy. He was parish clerk of St. Peter and Paul's Church for 40 plus years. Um, there was my uh, two sisters, twins, Rosemary and Philippa, and they were a good few years older than me, so I was the baby in the family, so I was the, the little baby in the cot, and they used to weed me around. I was the little dolly, and they used to dress me up, put makeup on me, that's what happened to me. <laughs> so the next thing, then um, I started in the Loretta, and um, it was a little mixed school then. So then I left Loretta, I went up to the 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 primary school for boys and then I went on to the high school and left the high school after doing my leaving cert, started a job in Clamwell Healthcare and then when I left there I ended up in Sean Crow Motors and then I met this young girl there one day who came for an interview. I asked her out and the rest is history. We're now married. Uh, we got a house on Feather Road in Fairfields. We're living there ever since. And we had two daughters, Aoife and Leanne. We now also have a grandchild. So that's how my life flew from being that little boy running up to Loretta, five years of age, and now I'm a granddad. So, wow. So that's basically my life in a very short and little, little fast way. What was your experience with growing up around Declan? Um, he was always messing, always had a camera in my face because we have loads of home videos. Um, always sneaking, sneaking us off places and we had to tell lies to man about where we were. Uh, so he'd bribe us with toy, toys and uh, cans of coke and crisps. <laughs> So that uh, we would we would say, no ma'am, we weren't in the betting office, or no ma'am, we weren't in the pub. Um, but yeah, always messing and laughing. And the second point to that, do you have any crazy stories about him? To sure, his story of how he likes to just do videos of himself all the time and now he's gone viral as a father, and most embarrassing father in Ireland uh, for dancing to ridiculous music in his ridiculous Michael Jackson dance moves. And uh, then I had to go on national television with him and present him as Ireland's most embarrassing dad for Father's Day. So I suppose that's one of the crazy stories. Uh, what was your experience with growing up around Declan? Um, well, I suppose experience is a good word because it was always an experience. Um, anywhere we went, everyone knew him and or even if we he, we were abroad on holidays he'd have to make friends straight away and entertain everyone um, by the end of the day I have would have heard the same joke about four or five times and I could tell you all the punchlines to all his jokes and every time it had a different story as well because he'd uh, exaggerate something or change something along the way um, so yeah that's I suppose what else is about him he we, you know, just always up for fun. We were all like, we used to have this thing where he, when he was a truck driver when we were little, if we got went off with him for the day, we'd go to Smith's and buy something and it might be 20 euro and you'd have to tell ma'am, it was only a fiver, it was reduced to a fiver. <laughs> so we always had to, to change how much things were that he bought us. And um, yeah, just always, well, we always say that he's always up for the crack and always, Good, good crack, but he's also, we call him Grumpy Granddad now, because uh, he can be moody too, like, but that's in, uh, what they say behind closed doors. He can be moody and he'd want to watch what he wants on telly now, home and away, or neighbours, that we were me, for man we're all watching. <laughs> okay, um, uh, do you have any crazy stories about him? Um, how much camera roll do you have? Because <laughs> I have a lot. Um, 
one of them that always stands out to me is hilarious. So dad had a, a Jeep when we were growing up and he was obsessed with it. So he was obsessed with keeping it clean. So he'd always be washing it like what he loved to just wash it himself like. So one, I remember one Saturday morning I went out to the port and here he was again washing his Jeep and uh, he was laughing his head off. So I kind of looked around and I was like, is there someone out there talking to him? And he was like, no, nope, no one around. And I was like, opened the door and I was like, uh, what are you doing, Dad? Like, you're, you're just standing there washing your car and laughing. He goes, oh, I'm telling myself jokes. And uh, if I think it's fun, if I laugh, I know it's funny and I'll tell all the lads in the pub later. If I don't laugh, I won't tell the joke. I was like, oh my God. I was like, you laugh at your own jokes anyway, so what difference does it make? <laughs> Um, and I, another funny one as well, we always went to France on holidays when we were younger and I remember one year we were at a water park and like dad is not the skinniest of men so on the water slides like he would have gone fairly fast anyway, he always would have beaten me and Eve on the slides but there was a little French kid in front of him one day and he told him, he was like trying to act out, pull your swimming togs up your arse basically and you'll go much quicker. So dad, after a conver lengthy conversation between two language barriers, dad figured out what the kid was telling them anyway. So he pulled his swimming togs up his arse and he went flying down the slide. Like he nearly died, that's how quickly he went down the slide. It was so funny. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> What is your relationship with Declan? Declan's my brother-in-law and married to my sister Fiona. <laughs> Declan's my husband. We are married for 35 years and he's a laugh a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when did you first meet him? I would have met Declan years ago in Mulca, his bar, long before he met Fiona. He was into the car rallies at the time, yeah? And he'd be hanging around with some other lads and when I used to go with my friends, we were all... 18, 19, I mean, you just meet Jacqueline and sure you'd have a great laugh with him and the joke telling and everything. So that's a bit before Fiona met him and then... Hmm. Now what, what are his best and worst qualities, Fiona? <laughs> <laughs> his best qualities, sure, as you say, he'll, he'll entertain everyone. <laughs> his worst qualities, so he's contrary in the morning. <laughs> uh, what do you think about his charity work? and how he likes to help people out. Fair juice to me, gives up a lot of his time to help out and hasn't he done some concerts and things and dressed up in mm. all his different disguises and he entertains people and helps raise money for charity. Well done to him. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. It's always good crack to be around. Whenever he's around there's always something left and you know it's never a dull moment. Declan's a fellow Arsenal fan so I can't say anything bad about him so I think he's a great guy all around. Um, who are you asking about? Pat Short, was it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Him. I'm sure Pat Short, he's made a great life for himself there. He, he's fucking set himself in stone there as one of the greatest Irish comedians, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a life and party, the place. Mm. Your life, it's all a party. Do you know what? He's very crack when he's laughing at his own jokes. Right? Yeah. Do you know what? He's not even funny, but I just laugh at how stupid his funny jokes are. Like. Mm. I first met Dick, uh, I'd say probably. 34, 35 years ago maybe. Uh, Sean Crow Motors in Clanmel. Hmm. Long gone, but that's where, when Declan worked in there, that's where I met. Hmm. Um, so we built a friendship from there and we've been friends ever since. Hmm. And he stood, he was my best man at my wedding, so needless to tell you, there's a few stories told at that wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Declan has been our postman for many years. Always great delivering post but also a very happy jovial person if you're ever in a bad bad form Declan would definitely cheer you up have a bit of a laugh love to chat but a really lovely real nice guy um, what do you think of uh, Declan? Declan is a great entertainer and is a great people person <laughs> is great people in company yeah. Um, he's a good son-in-law. He is a good son-in-law. Yeah. Well, he tells me he's a good son. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and kids were out for a meal one night in a Chinese restaurant here in Clonmel, and absolutely brilliant. The guys came up and said, Declan, would you give a demonstration? Our chefs, they'd all like they heard it. 
the nunchucks, nunchucks, and we have a set here. I said I haven't a set with me, hoping that that was it. No, no, we have a set here. So they brought them out. I actually think you have footage of it, Kevin, I don't know if I remember well that um, they put it up on Facebook or something at the time. And so I gave them a demonstration in the middle of a meal and a packed restaurant. And um, yeah, sure, the fun things like that. So then <clears throat> I went into the courier service um, business for a while, worked for a few people, then started working for myself, small little truck and up and down to Dublin every day. It was tough going, it was crazy hours. Whatever, did a lot of business here in Clamell with the people, but I gave it up eventually anyway, and I applied for on post and became a postman over, well over 20 years ago now. And um, that's where I am today. So, made a lot of friends there. Uh, my name is Dave Hogan. I'm a friend and a work colleague of Deccan Dunphy. I started working in the post office in 1998, about a year or so before Decky. <clears throat> And uh, I've known him from then, really. Good day at the post office. When I started first, I'd be in around quarter to five, five o'clock in the morning, maybe quarter to five. And, you know, you get stuck into your daily routine until Decky comes along and uh, starts slagging anyone around him. It's all good banter, of course, unless you're not really up for a bit of crack quarter to five in the morning. But I don't think that really bothers Decky. It just fuels his uh, passion to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose Declan, Declan is one of those lads that everyone here in the post office wants to be in, inspired to be. Uh, he's one of our role models in the post office and uh, I suppose he's, he's a legend and we love him here. So I suppose the big thing with me is comedy. I love making people laugh. And if you can make a person laugh, then you've done it, right? I was always told, who's the smartest man in the circus? And you think and you think. Someone said to me, the smartest man in the circus is the clown. It takes a genius to make that many people laugh and keep their attention for certain scenes all the way through the circus. So I have to be a little bit clever. So a lot of comedians, yeah, you have to be clever and funny. But I love comedy and whatever. And that's why I love when people give us a, re give us a reaction to our films. And I said, God, that was very funny. Oh, I laughed at that. Oh my God. I showed that to my mother. I showed that to my father. Oh, the kids love it. They think it's so funny. And it's simple comedy and it's family comedy. And that's what a lot of stuff is missing nowadays. But that's what I love doing. That everybody of any age can sit down and watch it. And um, I think with Kevin and myself, we've achieved an awful lot on that. And we add up all the different, um, I suppose, things that went down between Facebook and all the other ones, and phones, whatever. I don't understand all this technology, but there's well over a million views. Mm. Well over a million views. Yeah, exploded. So that was was crazy, crazy, and the messages I got and the whole uh, and it was really unscripted. Like we kind of went with the flow as we did it. That got a great reaction as well. Too. Of course, we did that for a charity fund then for a young girl who was ill, so it raised a good few pounds. But the photography was excellent in it. Uh, we yeah. shot a lot of um, scenes, didn't we? Yeah. With special effects, and, even though it looks so simple. Yeah, that was when you're on the. I was in a, on top of a car there, <laughs> instead of a sulky. Like, yeah. Yeah, just to get the close-ups. So there's people out there that just appreciate what we do and they appreciate our stuff. So that keeps us going. That keeps me going. Keeps Kevin going. Keeps us all going. And um, the appreciation of even just getting a like, as they call them, on all these um, Facebook things and all that whatever and they, oh I like I like and little comments underneath that was brilliant lads oh my god I laughed so much that keeps us going 
And um, then you get negativity. They, they turn around and they, oh, I didn't like that, I didn't find that funny. That keeps us going even better. People that don't appreciate it, that gives us that little boost. Keep it going in there so we get, we keep going then. Yeah, because there's always people out there will always try to put you down that small little bit. But Kevin and myself keep ourselves up that high. We're happy with what we do and we enjoy it. And we, whatever feedback we get, we work on that. One of the biggest highlights of my career, my career, I said my career, in my life, I suppose, was um, we were down training one night in the karate club and uh, Michael said, there's a producer here from, I think he said Hollywood at the time. We were all, oh. And uh, remember there was no phones and there was no internet and there was nothing like that those days. So it came by a letter in the post. We're calling the blah, blah, blah on such a night at such a time. So Michael explained that they were making this film, John Borman was the director, called Excalibur. It was all about uh, knights in shining armor and the round table and Arthur and the whole lot. And it was going to be made in Clare Castle. So we turned around anyway and they interviewed us and said, would you be prepared to put on armored suits and take blows and whatever, you all tough men and the whole lot, whatever. So we put on a demonstration of crap. And they picked so many of us out, and um, that was the start of my film career, my interest big time in films and the whole lot. Never went on to Hollywood after that, but got great experience. So <clears throat> we spent two weeks filming in care and in suits of armor and things like that. And made a lot of money at the time, and um, had great fun. And tough going, learned an awful lot about Hollywood and filming. and. Um, even the little films we do now, with yourself, Kevin, even, and you know, I appreciate the amount of work we do, maybe a minute, minute and a half of comedy, and it could take you three weeks to edit it, put sound to it, fix it up, make it okay, and that's only for a minute or something. So you can imagine us with horses and armored suits and climbing the castle and the weather conditions, and lights, cameras, action and all the lights fighting and then you hear cut, we have to go again. Lights, cameras, action, cut, we have to go again. He could do that 50 times and on the screen it might be three seconds long, the scene that he wants, but he has to get it right. Holly would have to get it right. What, what an experience and um, so yeah that was my introduction to, that was um, cinema and everything at the time and that's why when people ask me how did you get into film and the whole lot and the whole lot all down through Excalibur and the whole lot and I always had a cine camera in my hand I always filmed I always I have loads and loads of home movies and films I had as my daughter said they never when they were growing up they never saw me without a cine camera in my hand and uh, that was always my interest film 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 but there were different times to go away and study at them time it, it wouldn't have paid you'd have had to go further afield and it, it wasn't like now you just didn't jump in a plane and end up where you wanted to be and become a Hollywood producer overnight or some fantastic it didn't work out nowadays it's totally different there's so much everything is touch of a button and a phone call away and who you know what you know and who you see so it's different times but a lot tougher now too as well to produce something good that's why i appreciate all the stuff i do that kevin there in front of me that he does when we go away shoot all our stuff kevin goes away edits but i don't see that for two to three weeks later and when you ring me kevin and i come back and then i look and you always said to me well what do you think and i go well because i was in front of the camera but when it's put together, it's totally different, even for me to see. So I understand when major actors go to the Hollywood movie, some of those actors haven't met each other because they weren't in the same scenes and in different locations and whatever. So to see the whole movie put together, it's just fantastic. It's just, and that's, that's just it. And that was my introduction to movies. Hi right, Kev, I'm off. I'll see you during the week. Give me a buzz if you want me, okay? You know where I am. Here. <laughs> Don't forget, this time next year, we could be millionaires. <laughs>
work